Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on changing the subject of a formula where the subject appears twice with a square root. So we've got the square root in this particular equation. We want to make x a subject. That means to get x on its own on one side of the equation only. Now do you remember, when the subject appears multiple times in your equation, we had a very specific strategy. It was this. We first want to isolate the subject on one side of the equation but without any fractions or brackets or anything like that. We then factorise that subject out, and then finally we divide appropriately. So let's apply these steps to this problem here. Well, firstly, we want to try and get everything out in the open. Now, x is trapped inside of a fraction, and it's trapped inside of the square root. The last thing that happened on the right-hand side was this square root. So that's the first thing we should undo first. So how do we get rid of the square root? What's the opposite of square rooting? Well, it's squaring. So let's square both sides. So if we square both sides of the equation, the left-hand side just becomes y squared, because we squared the y. And if we square the right-hand side of the equation, we get rid of that square root, leaving x plus 3 over 1 minus x. Now, the x is still not out in the open, so we need to somehow get rid of this fraction. So to get rid of that over 1 minus x, we can just do the opposite of dividing by 1 minus x, which is to multiply both sides by 1 minus x. So if we do that, the left-hand side becomes y squared times 1 minus x. We'll expand out in a second. Don't use the time symbol in algebra, by the way. Just put things next to each other when you want them to be multiplied together. And then if we times by 1 minus x here, that gets rid of the over 1 minus x, leaving just x plus 3. And now the last thing to get x out in the open is to multiply out these brackets. So if we expand out the bracket, y squared times 1 is y squared. y squared times minus x is minus xy squared. Remember, alphabetical order, x first and y. And now we're ready to sort of finalise step one. So isolate the subject on one side of the equation. Now the x terms are currently on the left and right. We want to get them on one side. Let's get the x terms on the right hand side of the equation because if we were to add x, y squared to both sides, then they would both be positive, and we prefer having positive terms and negative terms in our equation. So let's do that. Let's add x, y squared to both sides of the equation. That gets rid of the minus x, y squared, leaving just y squared here. And then we get x plus 3 plus x, y squared. Now on the right-hand side, we've got all the x terms on one side, but we've got this plus 3, which is not an x term. So we should move that to the other side. So to get rid of the plus 3, we should minus 3 from both sides. y squared minus 3. And then subtracting 3 gets rid of the plus 3 which is just x plus xy squared. Now we've finished step one. We now need to factorise the subject out, step two. So can we see these have a common factor of the subject of x? And then the bracket would be, well, x times what is x? Well, it's just one. And x times what is xy squared? Well, it's plus y squared. And then we can do the final step, which is to divide appropriately. Well, x has been multiplied by 1 plus y squared. So we just divide by 1 plus y squared to get rid of that multiplied by 1 plus y squared. So we divide both sides by 1 plus y squared. Then that becomes, well, y squared minus 3 over that 1 plus y squared we divided by. And then we divide the right-hand side by 1 plus y squared. It gets rid of that, just leaving x. And that's the final answer, because we've got x on one side of this equation and is exclusively on one side of the equation.